Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. This is Wendy. If you're new here, welcome, and I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button down below, along with the little bell right next to it, so that you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. Today, I'm so excited to be doing three Dollar Tree DIYs, as well as one super sentimental upcycle using an old toy from my oldest son and making it into something beautiful. If you like these projects, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think. And so without further ado, let's get started. For our first project, we'll be using a 14 inch wire wreath form, two of these steering wheel covers in black, and then a windmill wind chime, but we're just gonna be using the bottom welcome sign part, a roll of white grow grain ribbon, some pretty heavy duty gauge wire, some lamb's ear from Walmart, these are $2 per bundle, and then some pink florals. I wasn't sure what I was gonna use exactly, so I just threw them all in there for this project and another one. And then our hot glue gun, our scissors, and our wire cutters. So I have really been crushing on these vintage bicycles that you see everywhere. And so I wanna make this look like a bicycle wheel. So I took my wire and started attaching it on the second rung of the wreath form. And this is the Dollar Tree wire that has that coating on it. So it makes your hands real dirty. So I used my rubber gloves to keep that from happening. And by the time I was done wiring this through, my gloves were just shredded because it kept poking and making holes and then ripping it. And so anyway, it did do the trick though. My hands were not dirty. So all I did was attach it and just wrap it around the rung of the wreath form and then strung it directly across so that all of the spokes will meet in the middle just like a bicycle. So now I'm gonna take my grow grain ribbon and I'm gonna string it around the first and second rungs of the wreath form. And I started by hot gluing it down and then just started wrapping around. And this is gonna serve as the white wall, I guess, of the bicycle wheel. So I didn't start with a full spool of the ribbon, so it really won't take the entire thing, but I was short just a little bit. But every time you get to a spoke, you're just gonna wanna go around that and then kind of shove it together so that there's not a big gap. I also was a little short on the wire, so I could have used one more spoke, but if you do this project, just you know, make sure you have enough of your supplies so that you can complete the whole thing. So now we're gonna take our steering wheel cover and I just realized I told you guys we needed two but we only need one in this project and we'll be using two in the other project. So we're just gonna cover that wreath form and to me it looks exactly like a bicycle wheel because of the rounded shape of the wreath form to start with. So now I'm gonna take a jar lid, and this is from a jar of capers, and it's the perfect size, I think, to fit right in the middle to make it look like the middle part of the bicycle wheel. So now I'm gonna take my lamb's ear and start embellishing, and I'm just gonna do it right where I ran out of my grow grain ribbon, so it's not gonna show. And I just kind of bend the leaves so that it makes a circular shape and will fit right along the lines of our wheel. And then I'll just hot glue those down and and then if it's not enough, I just take some scraps and add to it just so that I get kind of an equal amount on both sides. And then I'm gonna take my pink flowers and I'm gonna attach those in the middle of the leaves. And every so often I get asked where I purchase certain supplies. And if I'm using anything in these Dollar Tree DIYs, it's all from Dollar Tree. And if it's not, I will mention where I purchased it and usually what the cost is. But just so that you guys know, everything is from Dollar Tree if I don't say that it's from someplace else.
So now I'm going to take my windmill wind chime and I'm going to break off the welcome part. This is pretty flimsy metal so you have to be kind of careful not to bend it too much. And then I'm going to take my white chalk paint and give it a couple of coats so that it's pretty solid. And then I'll go back and kind of distress it with some black ink chalk paint and I'll use my fan brush to do that. Somehow I lost that clip so you don't get to see me do it. But here it is all done and I think it's so sweet and unique and super summer fun and I hope you guys like it. For our next project, we'll be using two boards that are the same size, some burlap ribbon, some jute twine, four of these tumbling tower game blocks, some white chalk paint, and I just have the Krylon from Home Depot, and then some Waverly chalk in black, some regular white chalk, a number two pencil, a couple of black and white printouts from my computer, and then my hot glue gun, a Cricut spatula, my scissors, and then a black and white paint pen. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get my boards ready by taking off the stickers from the back. And I just used my Cricut spatula to get it started. And you could use a heat gun if the sticky stays on too much or it rips off and then just get it off that way. I was gonna do the same thing and just peel off the paper from the front side of the signs, but it didn't work. And so I ended up having to take it outside and sanded it down because I wanna use both sides of these boards. We're gonna do a little bit of a handwriting tutorial and I'm gonna show you how you can make a pretty sign without having to have a cutting machine. So then I'm gonna paint one side of these with the black ink and I gave it two coats and I also painted the edges of the board. And then on the other side, I'm gonna use my white chalk paint and paint that. And you'll see me using my Waverly white chalk paint jar but I just took the Krylon and poured it into that bottle so that it was more manageable. But to date, I still am out of my favorite Waverly white chalk paint. So I wanted to be able to show you guys how to do black letters on a white sign and white letters on a black sign. And so on the white side, I want to keep my edges black. So I'm just gonna go outward with my paint on the white side so that it doesn't mess up my black edges. So for the white side, I'm gonna be doing black letters. And so I took my number two pencil and started rubbing across the back, but I noticed that my printer ink was kind of coming off onto my board. So I just put my cutting mat underneath my printout and then just kept rubbing over all of the letters and the lines and anywhere that I wanted to transfer onto my white board. And then I turned it over and placed it in the center of my board. And then I'm gonna use a teeny bit of scotch tape at the top so that I can keep lifting it to check where I'm at. And then I'll take a pencil and start tracing over the lines of the words and all the pretty scrollies. And so if it's a thick line, I'm gonna go on the inside and outside of that line. And then if it's a real thin one, I'll just go over it the one time with my pencil.
So I had realized pretty quickly that I was gonna have to use something smaller than my black paint pen because the letters were so small. So I used this Faber-Castell brand that I got from Michaels in a pack of five and it has a real fine tip, so that made it a lot easier to trace around the smaller letters. So I'm just gonna go around all of my pencil marks and fill in the heavy lines and try to stay as close to those lines as possible. It's not gonna be perfect, but I think it turns out really good in the end. And if you don't have this particular pen, any fine tip felt pen will work. And I think it's a great alternative to a cutting machine if you don't have one. So here they are side by side, and I think it looks pretty darn good. So now for the blackboard, I'm gonna use my white chalk, and I'm gonna rub that over everything just like we did with the pencil, but this time we're gonna be using the chalk. And then I'll place that in the middle of the board and tape that down. And I wanna make sure that I don't move it around at all because that'll get the chalk everywhere. And then I'm gonna take my pencil and trace around all the words and go through the same process. And anytime I'm doing a God project, it's always really meditative and therapeutic because I have my worship music going on in the background in my craft room. And it's just a really good time to be alone with Jesus and just immerse yourself in his word. So then I took my paint pen and started filling in all of the words and at first I was thinking I was going to smudge the chalk by putting my hand down on it and if you do that you can keep referring back to your printout that you did from your computer but putting my hand on it didn't smudge it at all as long as I didn't move it a lot so the chalk does stay in place pretty well. So again, it's not perfect, but I think it's even more precious because you got to spend some quality time with Jesus and it's more meaningful than just cutting it out of the vinyl. So after you're done putting it all down and once the paint is dry, you'll just rub off all of the chalk so that you don't see that anymore. 
So now I'm going to take my burlap ribbon and I'm going to measure it across and fold it over at the edge so that it has a clean edge. And then I'm going to take one skinny, skinny line of hot glue and glue that to the bottom portion of that burlap ribbon and then place it at the top of my board halfway because the other side I'm going to put on the other board. And so this is going to be a sandwich board, so to speak. And so I'm going to make it reversible so that you can have it either showing the black side or the white side. And once I get those two connected, I'll turn it over and open it up with the white side facing up and do the same thing so that both sides have a burlap hinge. So now I'm going to make the legs of my sandwich board and I just took four of the tumbling tower blocks and you can get them where they have some of them that are painted in this brown color. And so I just took my ruler and measured a straight line so that they would all be even and I will glue those to the bottom of my sign. Now I'm going to take my jute twine and wrap it around my four fingers five times and cut that off and then take another piece and tie it together and then I'll do that a second time and tie that to the first one and so that I get kind of a jute twine flower. And then I'm going to glue that to the bottom portion of my sign under the words and then I'll take a white button that I had in my stash and glue that to the center of my flower. And then to embellish the other side, I'll take another piece of jute twine and just tie a sweet little bow at the bottom of a scrap piece of greenery. And then I'm going to glue that to the bottom right hand corner of my sign. And here's the white side of the sign and I love how this turned out and it was really just meant to show you guys how to transfer words onto a sign without having a cutting machine. But I think it's also a word for somebody out there. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior, Judges 6, 12. And I know it always gives me encouragement if ever I'm feeling weak or defeated. And so maybe you can get some encouragement from this as well.
and here's the black side of the sign and I think it looks so pretty with this black and white buffalo check runner that I got from Kai Sin Pro. If you guys had tried to use the discount code in a previous video, those have expired and she's supposed to send me a new one. So hopefully she'll have it to me by the time I get this uploaded. And if you want to see how I made the little houses, I'll have that video linked at the end of this one. So I love how this turned out and I hope you guys learned something helpful and I hope you like it. For our next project, we'll be using another 14 inch wreath form, two of the steering wheel covers in gray, this cutie patootie little sign that says enjoy the ride, some black and white buffalo check ribbon from Hobby Lobby, and every other week their items go on sale, so you should never pay anything full price, it should always be 50% off. And then from Amazon, I got this sweet pink and white gingham ribbon. It's 5 8 inches and it was $10.58 for 25 yards. And then a little organizing basket. This is the medium size one. And then again, some more florals that I don't know what I'm going to use until I use it. And then some chalk paint in white and chalk paint in ink. And then some painter's tape some paddle wire preferably in green to cover up the leaves and stems of the florals and then some nylon cable ties the small size and then a tiny bit of sheet moss and this isn't the kind i used but it's the dollar tree brand and then some floral moss and then my hot glue gun scissors some wire cutters and some chenille stems and so in keeping with that vintage bicycle theme, I'm going to make a little basket that would be the kind that you would put on the front of a bicycle. So I'm using my big ugly cutters and I'm going to cut down my little basket and make it a little more condensed and the size that it would be in the right proportions. And so I didn't like it doubled up this way, so I decided to cut it down even more and just make the end attached to the larger part. And so in order to do that, I used my nylon cable ties to put those together on the bottom and then on the top. And I didn't pull the cable ties tight until I was sure it was in the right position. And then I'm gonna pull them tight so that it's all nice and secure. And then I'll cut off the excess nylon. So for this wreath, we are going to be using two of the steering wheel covers and I pulled it onto the back side first and got that all snug on there and there's a seam that goes all the way around the steering wheel covers and that's what I use to kind of gauge to make sure that it's even all the way around but it needs to come over the side so that it does stay in place and then I'm going to take the second one and pull that over and cover up the majority of the front part of the wreath form and then I'm going to take my hot glue gun and close it up at that opening in the middle.
So I decided to go with these pink crocuses and I just cut off the bottom part of the stem and I'm going to put two bundles together and I'm going to use my paddle wire and just tie it around at the back to secure it and then just wrap around a few times and then stick another bundle in there and then wrap around that and then I'll do two other ones going in the opposite direction so that they're meeting at the middle and then I'll be able to put my bow in between the two of those. So once I saw the color of my flowers next to the frame of my sign, it wasn't exactly the right shade. So I decided to just go ahead and paint it with my white chalk paint. And then the ribbon, I cut that in half so that I could use that to tie it to my wreath once I got to that point. And so later on, I will use some black chalk paint in ink and give it a little distressing. So if you're going to do this project, I would recommend that you do it now before you attach it to your wreath because it's always a little harder afterwards. And then I also painted the back side of it just in case it peeks out because it's going to be not sitting flat on the wreath. It's going to be kind of propped up. So now I'm going to make a few bows and the first one I made was out of the pink and white gingham ribbon and I just did five loops on each side and anytime you're using a smaller ribbon it's a little more challenging because it's kind of hard to grab and plus I don't have my nails on so I can't do anything like I usually can. So then I'm going to get a chenille stem and wrap that in the middle and twist it and poof out those loops and then I'm going to attach it to my black and white buffalo check bow. And so for that one I did six loops on each side because I want this to be nice and big and perky. And so I call this the fold over method. I don't know if that's the real name but that's just what we do is we fold it over and make six loops on each side and then cut that off and then we'll fold it in half so that we can find the center and then I made little snips with my scissors on each side, super small ones, and then I'm going to take my chenille stem and wrap it into that and then twist it in the back. And then that way I can poof out my loops and take one to the right, one to the left, and just get it all nice and perky and fluffy. And then I'm going to take my scissors and fold the ends in half and dovetail the ends. And then I'm going to attach that entire thing to the wreath in between my crocus flowers. And then I end up poofing my bow a hundred times throughout this whole process. So then I'm going to put my pink and white in between that. And then I ended up adding two more a little later because I love that look so much. So now I'm going to attach my little basket by using a chenille stem and putting it around the back and twisting it around so that it's nice and secure. And then I'm going to take a piece of floral foam and hot glue that inside of the basket. And then I'm just going to start placing my flowers into that floral foam 
and I want to be able to cover up the seam where I piece together the basket also. And then I'm going to take a strip of my sheet moss and cover up my floral foam once I get my flowers all into place. So this would be the time when you would want to do your black paint distressing, but because it was an afterthought, I'm going to have to kind of zig and zag to get it in there. But I attached my frame to the little basket and I used the ribbon that was on there already. So I just tied a knot and got it attached and then I'm going to add some hot glue to the bottom portion so that it stays in place. And then to make a hanger, I just took a scrap piece of chenille stem and made a loop and twisted it at the bottom and then hot glued that to the back side of my wreath and then just took a little piece of ribbon to cover that up. And then I cut off all of my extra chenille stems and I always recommend that you wait until the very last minute to do that in case there's something else that needs to be tied. But here's how it turned out and I think this is so sweet and I love it because of the bike and the buffalo check and pink and I just love everything about it. So I really hope you guys like it too.
For our final project, I'm going to be using this old wheelbarrow that my dad had gotten for our son 30 years ago. He's now 32, and Michael J. had redone it once, but we're going to upcycle it once again. And I'm going to be using some painter's tape, some Waverly chalk paint and ink, and then some matte black spray paint as well as some white spray paint and this is the kind that has the primer in it and I ended up using a can and a half of this and then I'm going to be using my Silhouette Cameo 3 and my Frisco Craft Black Vinyl as well as my Dollar Tree Transfer Tape which is actually shelf paper and then my weeding tools and my 24 inch cutting mat. And so the first thing I had to do was get it all cleaned up because it had been sitting out for a long time and so it was all dirty and the only reason I even realized I needed to do something with it is because it was over where I do my spray painting on the side of the house. So this thing is rusty and old and pretty icky but it really has special meaning so I was excited to do something with it. So after I got it all clean or as clean as I could I started taking it apart but quickly found that I was not able to get it completely apart so I had to take it to my son-in-law because as most of you know Michael J is already back at work so he was not available so I'm gonna tape off the wheel so that I can paint the inside and when you're going around a circle it's kind of tricky to get your tape to conform to the circular shape so I had a sweet viewer suggest using electrical tape because that can curve around the edges. And since Michael J is an electrician, we have plenty of this around. So I didn't think of it until after I was struggling with the one side, but it worked out. And so thank you for that tip. So now I'm gonna paint my handles and I just painted it with the black matte spray paint. And then I'm gonna paint my inside of the wheel and the rest of my wheelbarrow with the white spray paint. So once the paint was all nice and dry, I took my black chalk paint and a sponge brush from Dollar Tree and just gave it an enamel wear look by going around the edges of the top part. And then I'm gonna go back in and make some wear marks where it would be worn out and chipped like the old fashioned enamel wear looks. And I put some of the chip marks on the inside of the wheelbarrow because I might use this for something else. I'm gonna fill it with plants, but at some point if I wanna use it like in the fall and fill it with pumpkins, if you see the inside, I wanted that to look all complete as well. So now I'm gonna use my Silhouette Cameo 3 to cut out the word garden. And I'm using the font called Cream Candy. And this has the scrolly lines at the beginning and end of the word. And if you purchase this on dafont.com, you can get those scrollies along with the font. But if it's just for the free version, it doesn't come with those scrollies. So you will have to buy it if you want those edges to be all pretty like this. I'll also have it available in my Etsy shop. So you can find me at White Sparrow Living if you want to purchase this decal. This would have been a really good one to use the transfer method by using the pencil on the back of the paper. But anyway, I pulled up all the vinyl and weeded out my words and 
I don't know if you guys know, but Dollar Tree now has a really good crafting aisle and it's called the Crafter's Corner or something like that. But I found this weeding tool there and so I picked it up and it really works very well. So now I'm gonna take my transfer tape and cut that out to about the size of my decal and then I'm gonna put it right on top of it and then use my squeegee to get all of the bubbles out. Now because the surface of the wheelbarrow is so porous, it was having a hard time sticking to it and so I ended up having to use my heat gun to make that more secure and it kind of just melts to the surface and goes in and out of all of the nooks and crannies and then stays perfectly in place. And then I'm going to do that twice, one for each side. So then once Michael J got home from work, he put it all back together for me and assembled the arms and the wheel. And then we're gonna put a layer of old lava rock at the bottom and then plant some beautiful flowers inside of it. And I wanted some that would kind of hang off and be all pretty. And then he sprayed it down and gave it some water and then I put it in the flower bed and it looks so pretty. And here it is all done and I'm absolutely in love with this and I get to see it out my kitchen window and living room windows every time I look out there and we haven't finished our flower beds yet so I definitely need some ground cover but this is just so sweet and has such special meaning for me and for Michael J and I can't remember the names of these flowers and I meant to do that but I will get those and put them in the description box below and they're full sun flowers so hopefully they'll stay and hopefully since my sprinklers are out there I don't have to remember to water them and they'll last a long time but I'm in love with this it reminds me of my dad my son and I love it and I hope you guys like it too. this video and if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up comment let me know what you think i hope everyone has a blessed day and remember to always be the light bye